What is good? We're back for another installment of the FF Dynasty. The combine just went down. So we're going to... Uh, yeah, like four weeks ago. Give you a little combine uh, breakdown here. Jay Wayne's here. I'm here. Brad's here. Brad's here. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you can keep getting all the updates. We're going to do a little... Uh, combine action today we got some adp review with some rookies and how they're going to affect uh the latest adp and kind of where they would jump up post combine um and then we got some trade targets we got a live super flex mock going down this week as well so all that good stuff subscription will uh, get you notified. <laughs> notified notificated uh for those events so like i said the combine just went down certainly a, a piece to the puzzle here it's everything. Um, now we can know things. Interviews and medicals are certainly a big part of what the NFL wants to see here. Um, when you listen and read a bunch of stuff, they, they say that's you know kind of the biggest part of this whole thing. Get these guys in a room, check the medicals out, talk to them, interview them, see what they're like, uh, all those kind of things. Um, but it also can be sort of a tiebreaker and actually, actually put certain guys on, on your radar. Uh, I'm sure NFL teams, if they like the player coming into the combine and they exceed the expectation, that can really cement that player on their board. Uh, much like I'm sure some teams at least have a baseline that they don't want to draft a guy in a certain round if they don't at least have a certain athletic score. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of view that similarly. Um, but I think fantasy wise, I think, uh, this is more part of public perception than anything. Um, it's really about, you know, how the value is going to shake out and how that puzzle is going to start to come together. And, uh, you know, can is, is somebody going to gain steam? Did they have steam coming in and, and keep that steam and grow even more? And, and, and the personal public perception and, and value is really what fantasy kind of basically comes down to me. How to where's the value, how to evaluate that value and then, you know, where and how I want to take certain players or trade for certain players is really the name of the game to me. Um, I, don't, I don't really necessarily hate too, too many players at this level. They're all pretty good. It's just where I may or may not uh, have to take them. So uh, obviously the next part of this puzzle probably being the NFL draft, the situation that they end up in and the draft capital associated with them. Um, but this is certainly a little part and you, you've already begun to see some value spikes and some validation on some things and some guys probably dropping down. I don't think um, anything super dramatic on our end, but you know, there, there is a, you know, there's a hype machine a just with things, anything, maybe. um, just, just with anything when dealing with the, you know, a bunch of public people and, and, and the perception of, of perception really is reality. So, um, you know, we're going to get into a couple of these guys kind of see who, you know, I can go out on every person on the combine list here, but we're mostly just going to do wide receivers and running backs. We'll probably start with the wide receivers and then move through running backs. Not going to take a whole lot of time here. Um, but just wanted to kind of give our opinion on the combine and, right. and, and how we see it and view it. I'm not necessarily moving anybody up or down my rankings dramatically from this. I've, I've put, spent the time and evaluated these players. So, you know, it can be a little bit of a validation or a, hmm, well, I got to go back and watch the tape on both ends. This guy really blew it up. I mean, maybe I need to go watch him. This guy really uh, shit it up and, you know, maybe I got to go reevaluate what I saw there. So, Right. Or maybe there's some value found. And that's the whole point, right? It's, it's, we don't, you know, I'm excited to watch the combine. I want to see the numbers. I want to look at them. The NFL cares about it. Right. Right. Teams care about it. The interviews are awesome. And and then to see them, you know, up against each other. And and it's just, you've been studying these guys and now you get to see them stand next to each other and see how they're, how they're acting and how, how they go through these drills. It's, it's fun. It doesn't mean a ton to me. You know, it's like you said, we're not probably going to move a bunch, but some things probably have to tweak a little bit just because some things were unknown coming into this, uh, you know, size being some of it and then overall speed being a big one. So, we, you know, we're going to have a graphic. We'll show you sorted by uh, fastest 40 times and then a bunch of other stuff. We'll go through and break it down. But it does change things for a lot of other people, people that drive the value. And if if they drive a player's value a certain way, right? Like we'll get into it. David Bell, terrible combine. They already didn't like him. His value is going well, down. I don't know that we, people, we, we had Garrett Price on. He didn't like him, but I know plenty of people who did really like David Bell. So it doesn't seem like there's a consensus of 
people liking David Bell, but he was probably a mid first rounder, you know, late late to mid first rounder. So I mean, we'll, but we'll, bad we'll, combine, right? Might might provide some value for us to, to get him a little bit later. Not have to spend as much as you might have wanted to spend on a right. David Bell type guy. So with that being said, shall we get into it? Probably the first guy on my list, as we did it, um, may not be the highest 40 guy, but uh, Christian Watson came in, had some hype and some and some love and some and building uh, excitement from the Senior Bowl, and he he really carried that right into the combine here, and, and he blew that up with a 4-3, 6-40, uh, coming in at 6-4, 208, with a 38 38- Point five vert and a 136 broad all all pretty strong numbers across the board and i feel like he's really um you know just as as you know people are being like a david bell like you mentioned maybe being negatively portrayed you know that's gonna he's gonna fall down that's gonna put people like christian watson moving up where he was probably already right at the cusp of being a first rounder and now i think especially in in non super flex drafts that he has probably cemented himself as a as a first round fantasy pick not not well we're talking fantasy here so when we're talking about round values if we're not specific it means we're probably talking about fantasy drafts not an nfl draft he's helped him out in real life draft capital and in your fantasy life uh, draft capital. Uh, so Christian Watson, definitely a name, you know, you got to go into. We did the thing with Garrett Price here uh, last week, and and he's kind of said, you know, not a whole lot to watch on him. Right. I found um, three all 22s. And there's but they a run the shit out of the YouTube ball. So, you know, clips there, there are some big plays that pop off the charts that kind of match up to what's going on on these numbers here athletically. Right. Um, he's but, fast and explosive, and, and he makes those types of plays, and he's got – the size one right. of the bigger guys at the combine so definitely intrigued with christian watson we haven't done our deep dive into him watched a little bit here and there but he's got to be a guy that we put on our our radar and, and dive into as much as we can given, for sure so, given the tape available and then the the teams that he's playing you know albany south dakota val paracio i don't even know how to pronounce that uh, valparaiso yeah valparaiso <laughs> it's a better attempt than i had uh you know so it's tough evaluating. March Madness is about to happen. They're usually in the tournament. Those They've type of games, tournament. but you know, this is a guy with upside and ceiling, obviously, yeah. and and these numbers are going to drive his value up. So, getting safer to take Christian Watson. Yeah. So then, you know, the two Ohio State guys probably next on the list of you know, Garrett and and Olave. Olave actually, you know, posted a, a pretty fast time unofficially, then comes Jeez. back. Um, How crazy were those unofficial versus official times? Like, I mean, it totally fucked Olave because he ran a four two six, and even I was like, "Holy shit, did I have my evaluation wrong?" Because I, I was like, "I don't think he's that fast." I was like, "He's fast." I thought he was going to be around a four four, and, and I mean, I thought he was a four three guy, but that's what Dan Jeremiah said, and and I was just like, "I don't think he's that fast." And he ran a four two six. I was like, "Oh shit, maybe I was way wrong." Then it comes back the next day four three nine. I don't know how it's that many points off, but it like his value was up, and then it like. And it, it went skyrocketing with a four two six, and then it kind of came back down. And I feel like Olave is a kind of a guy that you might get a bit of a discount on. I don't think so. No. I mean, I think Olave's value stayed pretty much where it was. It was he was expected to be fast. He was fast. Uh, four, people three, like nine, him, smooth fast. route runner. The faction that likes him has liked him for a long time. He's going to have NFL draft capital. Uh, so I, I don't think there's a discount on Olave. I think you, you're going to get him you pr- probably stuck right around where he was, probably mid, mid-second mid or mid-first, and, and some people in the fantasy draft. Um, and then, you know, I know some people have him at the top of their board as the best receiver. Not me. Um, but, you know, Garrett Wilson, the other uh, Ohio State guy, he ran a 4.38, mm. um, 36 Didn't- vert, 123 broad. So all pretty much better numbers than, than Olave across the board. Uh, both of those guys came in at one six foot, one eighty three and one eighty seven. Um, so you know, a couple of these receivers or a decent amount of these receivers came in kind of light, possibly to run a little faster. Uh, but Garrett was already a pretty f- big fan favorite, so he may have just cemented himself. Whereas you know, as as possibly the WR one in a lot of people's books. Whereas Traylon Burks, right, who was coming into this thing at six two two twenty five. Where a lot of people, for some reason, had him pegged as a four three guy, which you know twenty three miles per hour. That's why they thought he was going to run the you fastest. Know, there's a difference ever. between combine speed and and track speed and playing football speed and on the field speed, game speed. And and Burks has has pretty strong game speed, as you can see with some of these GPS models. Which you know I don't know where to get that data from consistently, but a guy like uh, Tyquan Thornton who crushed it with a four point two eight is a sprinter. Like you know, so he comes into that event. 
able to Ready run. To I mean, go. he already is a fast dude, but he he understands uh, kind of what to do. We'll, we'll re- touch on him in a second. But, you know, Traylon, uh, probably for, for people who thought that he was some 4-3 guy are probably a little disappointed right now, which wasn't ever uh, in the realm of things that I thought was going to happen. I was going to be shocked if he ran that fast. Right. Um, so I believe- the fact that he was in the 4-5s is, you know, I thought low 4-5s. High four fours probably be about where he was. Um, and I'm not saying that I get these things right all the time. I've been plenty wrong. I'm thinking somebody's fast and they're not, or vice versa. And I, I think we got the Traylon Burks thing, uh, you know, pretty pretty good as far as I believe four five five was his unofficial time as well as his official time. So the, well, right. times are something's up with the times. Um, I guess does, the fact does the fact that he didn't have that great of a combine, which you know we have. We have Wilson and Burks in a tier together, right? Does it does 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 this do anything for your Burke stock? Does this are you no, like ah, I'm, I'm you... fine with it? Because because I wasn't thinking that that was what was going to happen anyway. I was already kind of here. Now you could say that the you know the 33 vert and the 122 broad and the 7.283 cone isn't the most exciting thing ever either. Which a lot of people didn't run the three cone or do the 4020 shuttle or 4060 uh, 2060 shuttle. I don't remember what it is. <laughs> 2060. It doesn't do all that much for me. He's six two, two twenty five. I watched him play. He's good. He's still that's still not the worst ever for a guy who's six two, two twenty five and plays the way he does. Right. You, um, you know what so, they can't measure at the combine is tackle breaking ability. Right. You know, and, and beastliness after the catch. The more the more th- the more concerning thing about Burks is that he he isn't super advanced in the route running and all that, but he he'll be fine. Like right. it just it's go back and watch the video that we have. It's gonna be about who gets him and how they use him, whether or not how if he's going to return uh, value on on where you were picking him. But and we there, call he may the, have he may have slid a little bit, a pick or three here for, for, for some people. No, no, no for, for okay. I think the general public, um, I think, you know, that was a general sentiment on Twitter. I think the, your average fantasy guy who isn't involved in the fantasy Twitter machine or the fantasy uh you know, industry kind of deal is probably not going to let him slide too, too much because I think he'll still probably have pretty high actual draft capital and, and he, he looks like a freak and he's still going to be touted as a freak. Um, but, you know, uh, I think, you know, in some drafts he may slide a couple picks. Um, whereas somebody like... Wilson over over Burks? Um, Based on knowing how fast Wilson is? I kind of had him right. I kind of had him right there with each other. With, Faster with than Drake, Olave. With Drake, you know, maybe slightly behind those guys. Drake not being at the combine seemed to help his stock. People seem more interested in Drake than ever right because now. Because he's not on because this he's list not at all. Because he didn't do anything. could uh, Which, hurt. you know, is, is super interesting. Uh, whereas, you know, a guy like George Pickens, who... I thought that I for sure was going to get locked in at the end of the first, maybe early second, where I feel like now he has definitely moved himself up into the, probably that mid first round. Uh, being a Devi guy who was a pretty highly sought after prospect, had the ACL, and then he came back, played a little bit this year, had some big plays, and then put together you know a pretty solid combine at six three one ninety five four four seven you know thirty three inch vert one twenty five on the on the broad jump. Um, so pretty solid numbers for Pickens. So I think he's he boosted himself up, which was a bummer because I was counting on maybe being able to trade into the back end of a first, maybe even early, you know, second. early second and maybe still grab some Pickens because it just didn't seem like he had ha- had a whole lot of hype and steam. And now maybe the, the Pickens train is is back up and, and, and rolling. So well, he, he did run an unofficial four four zero, which had people real excited, drops down to a four four seven, not quite as exciting, but still pretty fast. And, you know, just we did we did a rookie mock uh, with the patrons. We're about to release that. We're about to record a show uh, to dissect the first two rounds of that rookie draft that we did. And, you know, I had a choice to make. It was a tough choice. And Pickens was involved and and I wasn't quite sure I had to go watch some more film on him. Finally looked at the all 22s and I had already seen some of the highlights and some of the individual games on YouTube. But like the dude looking at him at the combine, like he's a specimen. Like the dude is a specimen. He carries himself in such a way that he's probably the best in the room. Um, you just, you can just see by the way he walks. He's a, he's a, right. uh, you by the way I walk. <laughs> uh, he's just really intriguing dude. And, and is not a ton of production to look at and had some injuries, but the ceiling, Oh my God. It's yeah. just he he's really rising like the the value is is on its way up for sure. 
Yeah, I think a guy like Jahan Dotson probably kept himself right in the mix of being a mid first rounder. I don't think he went up or down necessarily. Ran a four four three pretty fast. Right. Sky Moore probably put himself in the mix there. I know this, there's a lot of love for him. Five ten one ninety five came in at four four one. I just started getting into a little bit of Sky Moore. Looks looks pretty enticing, but I think uh, I, I think up. there's two Y's in Sky Moore. My bad. Don't crucify me in the think, comment section. I think before uh, the comment though. Before this is all over, I think Sky Moore is, is probably going to find himself possibly into that into that first round. Um, yeah, I haven't looked at any Sky Moore. I got the, the running the running Sky backs Moore. are are going to you know that there is more than maybe people thought necessarily from the from the testing that they did and, and the depth was probably everybody liked the depth but there wasn't maybe as much high end as they thought and I think a couple other running backs might sneak into the first round where maybe of they weren't before drafts. of rookie drafts yeah it, are um, people mad that the, this class might be good based on the combine I, I feel like know. that's kind of some sentiment I see on Twitter like they're mad that the guys did so well at the combine that everybody tested they thought this a was lot, such a trash class a lot better athletically than than right. uh, initially thought these wide receiver numbers are really strong pretty strong as far as speed wise and, and seemingly the same with the running back so other guys that kind of came onto the my radar that weren't necessarily on my radar were you know obviously Thornton from from Baylor 6'2 181 ran that 428 um, you know you've seen people like the Raiders and other teams you know this is one of those things where the NFL maybe overreacts to speed a little worse mm-hmm. than fantasy people because yeah. there there are certain teams there probably is a certain amount of that it is more viable in an actual NFL game to have that speed to be able to take the top off and when you could put the two things together like a Tyree kill it's obviously super dangerous uh, but you know Henry Ruggs had no business being drafted where he was drafted and it's incomplete because we we don't get to see the finished product of Henry Ruggs, but you know, that was just a bad move. I'm not saying, you know, he shouldn't have been a first rounder, but there was other receivers that should have went in front of him just because he posted a high, you know, four, two number just kind of got him. So Thornton, you know, may have just got himself a little extra For juice sure. here and, and wasn't really on my radar, but you know, watching a little bit, it wasn't, it wasn't the worst, like I said, a sprinter. So that probably helps the te- the, the, the time out there. Uh, and then a, then another guy would would have been uh, Velas Jones, who's seemingly been in college for seven years. <laughs> um, he ran a four three one, six foot two oh four, kind of a big, bigger, stronger, physical kind of guy, but super fast. Just dug into a little bit of him. There's not a whole lot to watch, but you know I know nothing about that guy. He wasn't even on my radar, but now he's he's popped up in there. And then Wandell Robinson, kind of in the smaller category, five eight one seventy eight. He looks really fun on the field. He ran a four four four, um, and Calvin Austin from uh, Memphis five eight one seventy. He blew it up everywhere. Four three two, uh, thirty nine inch vert, and then one thirty five on the broad sub seven uh, three cones six point six five. Um, so just so small though, it's he, hard to get excited about really, that explosiveness. He really he's so yeah. small. I mean, but he's definitely somebody that now will be you know third round fourth round guy that i'll that i would probably stab on because on, yeah. the, he's gotten some run gotten a little bit of love here and there and i was like ah you know he's five eight one seventy whatever and but now it's like all right well maybe you can get a catch a catch a decent slot out of this guy who who can do a lot of different things and, and maybe it'll he'll just end up being you know a couple of games where he does some crazy shit and then uh nothing else happens jalen tolbert from uh south alabama he, he's gotten some love and, and he had an okay combine there um, and then Isaiah Weston from from Northern Iowa, I believe, uh, 6'3", 214. He, he crushed it, 4'4", uh, 2", four, four, uh, 40-inch vert, 135 on the broad, 20 bench um, on player profiler. His, all his scores are really off the charts there. He's, he's kind of vaulted his way in there. It's not like he's up in the second round for me now necessarily, but um, just definitely a name to kind of look after. And then Alec Pierce, obviously from Cincinnati, had a nice day, 6'3", 211, 441, uh, 40 inch vertical. Vert. So, so showing some of that that burstiness. Ran a decent uh, three cone drill. Not nobody ran available. sub seven seconds, but uh, well, maybe in the wide receivers they did. Uh, no one in the running backs, but not too many, not too many good looking three cones. Uh, but at least he ran it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's something that but DK's I, you looking know, at this like, damn it, I should have been one of them. I heard, days. I heard some people uh, in the podcast realm of of the bigger draft people talking about how you know. Some of these 
drills may kind of be a thing in the past where these guys are coming in saying, you know, hey, just look at the tape. We're doing this. We're, we're going to run this. This this process takes a long time. It's a long day. We're going to do this. And then if you like me, come see me at the pro day um, and maybe I'll do some more. And then, you know, at the end of this, at the end of the list, you get a David Bell, a four, six, five guy, um, you know, disappointed a little bit at the combine but nobody he's 6'1 212 not a whole lot of big receivers on here Traylon Burks is one of the only other guys and, and Isaiah Weston that we just talked about that are in even in the 200 club kind of where you see here and 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 you know I know I wasn't expect David Bell to burn it up but you know you Slowest go back to the guy tape, at the combine you watch you watch David Bell and it's not about his game is not about the 465 he's gonna fall into that Cooper Cup into the Devontae Adams into the into the um, new Hopkins, like isn't going to test super well, but he just understands how and where to be on the field um, and seems quicker than fast. The, the three cone wasn't super great, but it's what certainly wasn't the worst out of any of these. Uh, but I, I'm still not shying away from David Bell. What this does now for me is allow me to possibly gain some value on David Bell, like you talked about at the top of this. So now instead of maybe being, uh, you know, a seventh, eighth pick, maybe he's more, Two 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 three two four pick um, in a lot of drafts, and I will. I'm going to go ahead and take the roll the dice on David Bell. We talked about it with Garrett Price. I could see him having a f- fairly wide range of outcomes, but I- I'm willing to take the risk because he's been great since high school. He's a Gatorade Player of the Year. He's a leader. He wants to work hard. He wants to be great. Um, he takes the responsibility of being one of the better t- players on his team, and is pretty pretty selfless guy. And you know, David Bell for me, he has it between the years. He has the work ethic, and he's always been a baller as far as on the field. And obviously, the athletic testing wasn't his strong suit here, but I'm I'm still not going to shy away from David Bell. I'm just gonna I know that I don't have to draft him uh, in the range that I was going to, and then I could you know hopefully acquire a second or two and 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 be able to pick up some extra David Bells that I wouldn't have been able to get before. Right. It's uh, kind of the opposite of what happened with uh, George Pickens with David Bell. You right. Know, guy you liked, stock went down. So let me turn the yellow legal. Let's get the running backs <laughs> and then we'll, then we'll get out of here. So obviously the talk of the town, you have a guy like Brees Hall Bruce. pretty much just rubber stamps it. And, and now he is, he's going to, you know, shoot up ADP wise. He's going to shoot up everybody's Startups. boards everywhere. Anybody who had any questions between him and Isaiah Spiller probably just kind of cemented the fact that, you know, he's probably got the edge tested really well, came in five eleven two seventeen, And mm. now there, there seems to be, you know, we, we, he is we fast. were, we were, you know, we were in, we were, we wanted Bryce or Brees to be the number one guy. Um, and, and, you know, definitely feeling ourselves after this because Brees uh, went ahead and, and stamped that up. And then our guy, Kenny three sticks, Mm. Uh, Kenneth Walker the third. Uh, He's came faster in. than Brees. We we said he might be. We thought we we projected. We we um. What's the word I'm looking for? Spoke it into existence. Oh, uh, 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 speculated. There it is. We yeah. speculated that Walker might be faster than Brees. And if you check the tape, it's point zero one percent. For real. He came in at five nine two eleven four three eight, and I love every. It was close for me. I was I was I had Kenny ahead of Spiller, but I kind of had them all tiered up in one tier, and Spiller didn't do a whole lot here at this combine. He he um, was hurt in training. I yeah, read, okay. uh, so he wasn't like a hundred percent, and so you know didn't run the forty, uh, did run some other drills, but he's gonna he's gonna try and boost that up at his pro day. But I mean, check the tape on Spiller. So yeah, I love all those guys. I'm not the moving lack him of a down. great combine, right? Him, not moving him down. I'm Boom. keeping him right up with, with all those other three guys. Now, you know, maybe it's Kenny and Brees and a, and a slight tear break with Spiller, but he's, he's probably staying. I, w- I want those three running backs probably just about over anybody. We, you know, we'll talk about that a ton of times, I'm sure. So no need to do it here. Um, but uh, some other guys who had a nice combine, like we said, you know, a lot of lot of fast times here. So uh, Zamir White, who, again, Garrett Price was big on him. We just had him on. Go check that show out. He ran a 4-4. He's coming in at 6-2-2-14. Got a lot of bigger backs, too, in this class. Kind of running fast. Zeus, baby. Zeus. Um, you got love Zamir White. I'm really he's really picking up steam from me. right. 33.5 for 128 broad. That's one of the better broads out of all these guys. Right. So With that that speed, man, 4-4 flat. So, and yeah. it'd be a, known as Zeus. Right. Like, 
and had some adversity coming through oh, life and then had some adversity awesome coming dude. through playing career with ACL and then another ACL on the other leg and finally just getting healthy. If you're and, ever having a bad day, just check out what, what Zamir White had to go through just to get here he and you'll feel better about yourself. Certainly moving up uh, fantasy draft boards. And, you know, I think I think James Cook and him and Zamir White both had, you know, NFL teams probably a little bit more into him than the fantasy community. And I think they're maybe catching up a little bit here. Uh, James Cook had a, had a pretty good day as well. 5'11", 199, 4'4", 4'2". Um, a little bit more of the pass catcher, and he's so smooth um, sure. as, as far as his movements and the way he moves around on the field. Uh, just just super-duper uh, smooth in, in the way he operates. 4'4", is obviously a really good time, but the way they – like, he, you know, the rest of them wasn't, wasn't the – greatest or anything eye popping but the way that they were just talking about him at the combine on air mm -hmm. like he's basically Dalvin Cook like he was like that's Dalvin Cook's brother that's Dalvin Cook like they were trying to basically and they were putting him up against each other now he didn't run as fast as Dalvin he's not as big as Dalvin he's not as good between the tackles as Dalvin but was still getting a ton of love just yeah. just a ton of hype and I feel like his value has to be going up yeah. and, and, I, and I'm interested because of the pass catching I mean for, for sure. sure gotta be Oh yeah, I, I, and then to four four two. You know, it's not as yeah. fast as as Zamir or Brees or Kenny Three Sticks, but still four four two, pretty bit damn fast. Pierre Strong came on, put his name on my radar. A um, little uh, from the Jack Rabbits there, four three seven, uh, <laughs> thirty six inch vert, one twenty four. Uh, Ty Chandler from from UNC. Uh, don't know a ton about him, but you know, again, bigger back, six five eleven, two oh four, ran a four three eight. Um, I. You know, didn't certainly didn't have him up there with any of those guys and, and, and haven't done a whole lot of studying on him. So we're going to have to go brush up on him. But we know that Rashad White was another guy that a people that a lot of people like. He was pretty highly graded on PFF. He tested out pretty well at six foot two fourteen, running a four four eight. Not a whole lot of these guys move themselves down anywhere as far as, you know, because the athletic testing kind of took them off your board. Uh, they, they all tested. I mean, even Brian Robinson coming in at six two two twenty five, running a five three. Or a four five three forty is is not is not bad at all. Way like faster. That's, than, that's probably faster than a lot of people thought he was going to run. That's fantastic for him. Um, you know. So, and then at the end of the day, you have Kyron Williams being the big disappointment. Uh, where you know some people might have even bust. had him as the RB two or the RB three in the class, really? and now um, people, some people have him that high. And then some now he's probably moved down, you know, probably out of the first round in fantasy drafts. Uh, he was definitely being selected in the first round. I feel like as far as pre combine, people would have definitely grabbed themselves some Kyron Williams. And may, again, this is kind of like David Bell for me. The tape looks really good. The game speed is faster than what he was showing there was always kind of projected as not being the guy he was going to be in a committee. And I think he could still be in there and, and super strong on tape for, for the build that he has and, and quicker than fast, but certainly quick enough and looks Hit like a, a real problem out there. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it sucks that he, he didn't perform like he did. If you want to knock him off your list, that's fine. I'm just going to be okay with being like, all right, well maybe now he's more of a mid second to late second. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hop on that value and see if I can turn it into something. And uh, so, you know, I'm not that upset about the Kyron Williams thing. You just have to adjust and, and you know, the Zamirs, the Rashad whites, uh, maybe even Brian, Brian Robinson's uh, maybe a Jerome Ford. Uh, maybe all those guys, maybe even a Tyler Beatty moves ahead of uh, all, you know, takes the place of Kyron Williams as a smaller third down kind of guy. Uh, so I think all those guys probably move up and, and, you know, Kyron Williams obviously takes, takes the, the low man on the totem pole here. Uh, so really that's all I got for, for running backs. If you got anything else, my boy Zonovan Bam Knight looked pretty good in that Deuce Staley drill. Yeah. Quick <laughs> feet. Uh, he looked just like Jonathan Taylor. And then when they played other guys, you know, following him, they were not running as they were, they were not, having as quick as feet as Zonovan Knight. Now, he didn't test out that great, but and I haven't dug into the tape, but my in-laws, huge NC State fans, they made me watch a lot of games. He was always popping off mm -hmm. as someone just carrying that team. Uh, so excited to get basically free Zamir White. Uh, Zamir White, uh, he's not free. He's probably going to be like an end of the first round pick. Uh, but Zonovan Knight, Bam Knight, 
going to be free for fourth round pick. Yeah. Let me get, let me get some. Well, like I said, the next piece of this draft or this puzzle is going to start to be draft capital and landing spots and all that kind of stuff. Obviously more time spent grinding out what, you know, the, what these guys did, their analyticals stuff and their film stuff, you know, there's, so little time and you're trying to get through all these guys and, and put them in an order. It's and now you got, now you have a whole new list of guys who may have, you know, crept up a little bit more that you got to really get in there and dig in on. Uh, so it's exciting. We're excited to move forward with this again, subscribe, go ahead. We're going to do some ADP. We're going to talk about where these rookies are currently in the latest ADP and then what this combine may have done uh, as far as moving them up in said ADP, we got a live super flex mock coming at you this week, and we got trade targets right on the cusp of, uh, of doing things. Uh, we also have t shirts at revelrybrewing.com, or I don't know if it is Revelry Brewing. I don't know, it might just be Revelry. It's revelrybrewingco.com. You can but go I get will, you. I will check the link. Check the link in the description. <laughs> Uh, so be sure to subscribe for all that. Obviously, we got the patron Patreon rolling. We're rolling out our rookie tiers. We're rolling out our uh, NFL tiers here very shortly, and we're working through all those things. That's what we're doing in these mocks, and then we're taking it to a Patreon show afterward and kind of massaging some tiers. We've worked through five, six, seven, eight tiers so far, um, and and they'll be on our Patreon very shortly. Uh, so multiple ways of support: Patreon, go buy a shirt whatever you need to do we appreciate y'all for just listening that's support enough listening on the podcast hit us with a five-star review we'll see iTunes, you next time itunes and spotify please peace